Welcome to Scrutinize My System. For this episode, we will be diving into the sixth incarnation of the classic macOS family tree, System 6. In 1989, reality was beginning to crush the dreams of Apple Incorporated. Their market was flooded with computers that rivaled their own graphical user interface, while keeping their price tag much lower than what Apple could afford to do themselves. Christmas of 1989 would see a drop in sales despite the release of the Macintosh Portable. Apple stocks were dropped almost overnight, and blame was promptly distributed. John Scully made the same mistake with Jean-Louis Goss as he did with Steve Jobs. He demoted Goss, stripping power from him. Just like Jobs, Goss left Apple to start his own computer company. His company was called B Inc., and they developed their own hardware with the software. Scully once again created another competitor that would take a bite out of Apple. Scully also knew the lower-end computers that the company was producing was cannibalizing the sales of the higher computers. The Apple II was still being sold despite being largely obsolete at this point. What does Scully do? He deprecates the popular computers and instead pushes a variant of the Macintosh. Gradually, Apple started making decisions out of panic, flooding the market with countless products targeted at markets they are not known for. Apple was rotting at the core. All right, so I'm only going to do one version of this operating system because at System Software si or excuse me, System Six, they're all pretty much going to be the same. Um, I keep calling it System Software Six because the previous versions were called System Software, except for Number Five, which that's a big mess in itself. But um, this one was officially labeled System Six, um, so. I may accidentally call it System Software 6, but it's pretty much the same operating system. So this one we're going to do 6.0.8. And really, there wasn't really much of a difference in between the different versions of the system software. So let's go ahead and open this up. Um, there's two discs with this thing. There's the System Startup and the System Edition. So we'll go ahead and actually insert both of them. Uh, we'll boot off the system image. And you'll notice that things are actually starting to change. So you got the floppy disk, you got the trash. Um, the interface here is starting to look a little different. The background is a little bit more gray. Uh, you got the Apple logo here. Um, there's a lot more color support here. Now I'll show you that in a second. Let me go ahead and insert the second disk. All right, so we got the system startup. Let's go ahead and explore what's on the disk first. So we got the installer, system folder. I'm not going to install this just because there's not really a whole lot to justify installing everything if we've got the, the addition. Um, why don't we actually? Okay, so let, let's go ahead and actually launch the installer. I, wanna, I was going to install it previously, but I actually want to show this. Um, the installer looks a little bit different than the last one. So we've got welcome to the Apple installer. Your Macintosh needs certain software to start up. The installer places the software on your disk in the system folder. Easy install chooses the software Apple recommends and creates a disk which can be used to start up your Macintosh. Customize if you're sure you want to overwrite those recommendations. So let's go ahead and click OK. I did plug in a new disk. Um, click install to place... Uh, version 6.0.8 on the Macintosh 2 system software, software for all printers. Uh, we're going to switch that disk. Um, I plugged in a new one, the Macintosh HD, which surprisingly shows up as a hard drive here. Um, even though on the, the desktop they'll actually show us floppy disk. I call it the super floppy disk because it's huge. But So we'll go ahead and install it on here. And we're going to install everything speed this up if you're finished uh, that's the thing I love about emulators for these older machines you can just speed them up uh, installation of Macintosh HD was successful if you are finished click quit to leave the installer if you want to do additional installations click continue so let's go ahead let's see what else we can do yeah we're done here <coughs> nothing new there so, Macintosh HD, 
looks like we got a system folder so there's not much there so let's go ahead and plug in the other one, disc I don't know why I unmounted it let's see what's on here okay so we got an Apple file exchange folder the font DA mover printing folder macro maker folder Apple color so let's go ahead and just start installing everything this is not what I had in mind okay so the Apple file exchange folder I don't have any programs to demonstrate this with um, I may do it in another episode but for the sake of time I'm not going to this is a translator to switch programs in between MS-DOS and uh, um, Apple so basically you can run your old uh, DOS stuff on, on here and everything um, we got desk accessories let's go ahead and just install everything I wonder what installed. Looks like everything installed. So let's go ahead and let's start unmounting all this. And we'll go ahead and boot off of the Macintosh HD. So let's go ahead. We'll eject that. So we'll go ahead and eject that and set startup all right I guess I gotta re re-put in the hard the uh, that's not what I wanted go ahead and plug in the hard disk drive the mock hard disk drive okay so we're running off the installation we installed it to I call it a super floppy drive because this virtual machine shows it up as a floppy di uh, floppy disk for some strange reason uh, about the finder let's go ahead and click on that <coughs> so this the finder version is 6.1.8 the system version is 6.0.8 now this is the actual system version um, from 6.0 or from version 6 and later ever the system version is actually going to be on the box so that makes things a lot easier from here on um, we got 8 megabytes of memory it says 8,000 kilobytes that's a megabyte um, the finder system so it shows you how much is consuming what um, then we got Larry John Steve's and Bruce Apple computer Apple computer incorporated 1983 to 1990 and it's interesting that it says 1983 here because that was when the Apple Lisa came out even though the Macintosh came out in 1984 so that shows that the technology is the same um, let's go through the system utilities this is pretty much the same it says 1.5 which is interesting it used to be down here now they moved it over here um, so that went unchanged calculators unchanged even though it's still got that black and white interface which you can tell the rest of the computer is in color. Uh, we got the chooser when it loads. Now I did install everything, so everything's going to be showing up, but nothing's going to work because it's not plugged in. Um, I'll show you the control panel in a second. Find file, the same. Keycaps, the same. And you notice that everything kind of is geared towards black and white, even though there, you know, this this Macintosh does support color. And part of the reason was because everybody was buying the black and white ones. That was all everybody can afford at the time. They wanted cheap. And the newer or the higher end models that could support color, like what we have running in this virtual machine, which we can get away with a virtual machine, um, they were expensive, and not a lot of people could afford them. So most of the stuff is pretty much unchanged so but let's go ahead and do something new let's go ahead and I guess we'll have to go into the system folder or in the uh, the hard drive let's go ahead and make a new folder let's keep it as empty folder now something that these higher end models can do you can change the color so you've got orange we've got red we've got we well, have to select it in order to do it uh, cyan we got blue we got green we got brown and black is the default one so 
we got color. We can actually label all the different folders different colors. So I can come up here. I can make this one red. I can make a new one. It says copy of empty folder, which I thought was interesting. We can make this one. Uh, let's do cyan. So we couldn't do that. So there, there is color support on this operating system, and that's going to be a nice feature that thankfully does not get shed anytime soon. Um, <clears throat> that does survive the test of science, so I do like that. Even though this interface is going to change a little bit, the, top, the bar on the top is going to be relatively the same. So with that said, let's take a look at the control panel. And it's very similar to System Software 5, or excuse me, the, correction, the Apple... Macintosh System Software Update version 5. I think I said that right. It's it's a mouthful, so it's I don't blame you. So interesting part about this is with the desktop pattern, you've got a color palette. You can come on here, you can click on it, and it changes it. So I can make this whole thing well really whatever color I wanted. But there's already some presets. That is very bright. And it just overall gives it some color. They won't necessarily have some wallpaper until later on. So for right now, we're just kind of in this operating system trapped with using uh, basically whatever you can draw in. Is that 8 pixels? 8 by 8 pixels? So whatever you can draw in 8 by 8 pixels is going to be your desktop background. So with that said, um, you still got the color palette. You can change your color options, which is kind of nice. Uh, I haven't actually played around with this. I don't know if that's that. Ooh, okay. Okay, there we go. I don't know why these numbers are so high, though. I don't know what color palette that thing's relying on, but... <clears throat> Excuse me. So you can come over here and you can change your colors and everything. Like I said, I have no idea what these numbers are referencing to, because these are... This is not your standard 255. This is some... I don't even know what that is, so... But you do have all your color options, so that's kind of cool there, so... Um... Pretty much everything else is the same. We do have the option for uh, monitors. Now I can switch this to black and white. And you start getting the exact same interface that was on the previous version of um, Macintosh. Uh, the Macintosh operating systems. But then you come down here. And this is where things get interesting. I only have one monitor plugged into this virtual machine. But you have the option to be able to rearrange them. And that was a feature that was introduced with the uh, the Macintosh 2, which is what this virtual machine is running off of. So I could, in theory, if this was an actual physical machine, I can plug in multiple monitors into this thing. And as soon as you click on this, you know it tells you that this is monitor 1. There's only one monitor plugged into this thing for the sake of demonstration, but... Uh, you do have the option to have multiple uh, monitors, and that's pretty cool for the 80s. This this machine was able to support up to six monitors, but I I didn't know they had computers in the 80s that did that. So we got the mouse. Uh, everything's in tablet mode because of the virtual machine. You have the option to dictate. Pretty much all of this is the same thing that uh, was in previous operating systems. So you got your simple beep. Uh, you got your, all the sounds. Pretty basic. Then you got startup devices. Which, right now, the only thing that's plugged in here is the Macintosh HD. But, let's go ahead and plug in another one. That's the default uh, boot disk on here. Let's see. It. So, that'll pop up here. And then, in theory, I could switch it to this and it'll boot off of this instead. But that's assuming that... It, it's plugged in at the time when this thing's uh, booting, but for some strange reason, this operating or this uh, not the operating system, the uh, virtual machine ejects every time every time the uh, machine is reset. So 
we can just go ahead and eject that and it's out so other than that other than the real color support there's not much that's changed so I would hate to be redundant and just go through everything and literally show the exact same thing over and over again so I'm gonna cut cut this short um, again this is system software 6.0 excuse me system 6.0.8 and they all pretty much behave the exact same way um, you've got the trash bulge when you throw stuff in here the actual trash can will start bulging until you empty the trash and it's gone so that's pretty much unchanged um, we're not gonna see some major changes until system software 7 which we'll get at and on the uh, next episode on the history of Mac OS. So, um, if you enjoyed these, uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos. We've got more Mac OS on the way. We've got Next. We've got uh, OS2. We've got Windows. We've got DOS. We've got a couple on the way. Um, stay tuned for more. And again, subscribe if you want to see more episodes. Thanks for watching.